This is a Real Ghost Stories Online Extra. Um, this is Ivan. I called in uh, two times so far and you've aired both of my stories. I wanted to thank you for that, uh, for sharing those stories. Um, I spoke about my mom who used to be into Santeria slash Brujeria. Um, I pretty much grew up in a normal child. Grew up in Kenneth Square in uh, the rural area. Yeah, ever since I can remember, my mom was uh, definitely uh, like a conduit or a psychic of sorts. Uh, there were times we would be sitting in the living room watching the Brady Bunch or whatever it was, and all of a sudden she would just start acting weird. And then after that, my dad, he already knew what to do. He would come and sit next to her, and she would start speaking, usually in a deep voice, and she would tell him things, uh, either things that were going to happen. Uh, sometimes it was lottery numbers that she would tell him to play. Uh, but usually it was a message for someone. Um, I got one that I was going to be in a car accident. My brother got one that he was going to drown. And she used to warn my dad um, of things that were going to happen. Um, as a result of her being involved in that, she used to have people that would come against her. One was my aunt that I call the witch to this day. And that's where the black magic came in. You know, so I've seen some strange things. Uh, her room was set up where she had Africans, Indians, Buddhas, and uh, these other saints and other statues that she had throughout the room. Uh, when you came in her room, you would get the crease. You felt like the statues were watching you. She would uh, light cigars for them and give them liquor and give them water. Uh, she had this big like a vase, looked like a big wine uh, cup. And she would keep it sort of with water. And believe it or not, it was like a crystal ball to her. Uh, there were times that she would just get that, whatever it was that would come to her or through her. And she would look into it and she would start chanting something. And the next thing you know, like I said, my dad already knew what to do. So he would be right there next to her and she would start talking to him. Uh, it kind of became the norm for us. I know I was never really afraid of when she acted like that, but I, you know, like I said, I was always afraid to go into her room. I felt like I was being watched in that room. And uh, that's pretty much how that was, you know, growing up. And, um, you know, things just kind of uh, took a turn for the worse there towards the end because they were coming against her. And so then she started practicing black magic, basically. Like I said, it's called brujeria, and I seen her one time at the table. She took a jar, regular mayonnaise jar, whatever it was. She emptied it out, and she wrote something. It must have been about four or five pages long. She stuck it at the very bottom of the jar, and then she put salt, pepper, lemon, lime, everything that was salty and sour. And she poured it in there, and then she took a black candle, and she basically melted it down into the jar on top of the letter and on top of all the pepper and stuff, and took it, she sealed it up, and she buried it in the backyard next to the tree where our dog was at. Now, this was a healthy dog. He was, uh, not sure exactly what kind of a dog he was, like a Labrador retriever. But he was a healthy dog, though, and there was one night on a Friday night, I remember it was about 9 o'clock in the evening, and we're all sitting in the house, and the dog started howling like like a wolf. Just kept howling and howling and howling, and I was like, what's wrong with him? You know, he never acts that way, but my dad went out there, and he brought the dog in the house. Uh, the dog came in the house, continued to howl, and within a matter of minutes, he dropped on the floor, started shaking, kicking. He spewed up all this green stuff. And then he just died right there in the living room floor. That I was freaked out about. I just, uh, I was like, wow, whatever she put in that jar, it was that strong that it killed the dog. I was, you know, that's what I thought. I'm about 11, 12 years old. So, you know, that's what came to my mind that, my mom just killed the dog with whatever it was that she buried in the next to him. And, um, you know, like I said, she didn't really die a pleasant death. But, uh, you know, I've experienced things since then. I'm not saying it's related to that. I feel like something does follow us around. I heard you and Carol speaking about it and saying how maybe I should go see someone like a psychic or a medium to see what is going on. Um, you know, maybe she needs some kind of closure or maybe she did 
uh, conjure something up and left that door open. Um, I really don't get scared, but I just know that there's something there. And like I said, it's, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that we experience things from one house to the next. I don't believe that every house that you move into is haunted. Uh, the house that we're living in now was built in like 1920. You know, so I'm not saying that nobody has died in that house. And I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people have come through in that time. But, you know, I just think it's something that follows us around. And uh, again, I just wanted to share that again, you know, a little more insight on my mom. We are planning on going to go see someone to see what they have to say about it. It's just a matter of finding someone that is actually real and, uh, you know, just take it from there and see what happens. Uh, keep you updated, let you know what's going on. And, uh, and, I, and like I said before, and I thought uh, Carol thought it was kind of funny when I said, you know, we're not paranormal investigators, but I do believe in life after death. I do believe in the paranormal. I believe that ghosts do exist. I believe that there's good spirits and I believe that there's bad spirits. And uh, you know, every now and then we go to places like uh, Gettysburg, which we're planning on going to in, in the next few weeks. We're going back again because the few times that we've been there, we've never experienced anything. Like I said, we thought we heard something one time, but I, I don't know. It could have been something else. But, uh, yeah, as my wife says, you know, I'm going to keep uh, looking for ghosts until I finally see something and then I'm going to stop. <laughs> uh, but, again, thank you guys for airing my story. And, uh I definitely enjoy the show. Never been a podcast listener. I became an EPP member, and uh, I look forward to hearing more stories and uh, feedback. So, again, thank you very much, and have a good day. If you want access to more Real Ghost Stories, become a premium subscriber to Real Ghost Stories online. Sign up now through Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Not on Apple? Go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com.